train hard, train heavy, rest, recover, grow. That's the formula for building serious amounts of muscle mass, right? That's what everyone says online, everywhere you read on the internet, and just common knowledge in bodybuilding circles. It's the formula that I personally used to build my first 10 to 15 pounds of muscle mass. But eventually, after my newbie gains wore off in the gym, I learned it was gonna take a lot more than that to gain the next 10 to 15 pounds of muscle. I started bodybuilding at 160 pounds, skinny and lanky. At my heaviest bulk, I got up to 204 pounds at 5 foot 11. Nothing groundbreaking in terms of sheer weight, but at a dieted down 190 to 195 pounds, which I personally feel is my true and most quality physique. A net 35 pounds of actual muscle tissue gained over my entire training career didn't come easy. It definitely took longer than I can honestly say it needed to, and it took a ton of trial and error with more errors than successes along the way. But now, at just around the 20 year mark of bodybuilding for me, as well as year 10 coaching other bodybuilders, I've really narrowed down to what I feel is the most solid principles for mass gain training that there is. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you all my trials and errors from myself, as well as the feedback I've collected over the years from others, as far as what works and what doesn't to build muscle mass. Without giving too much away just yet, let's say the majority of what I've learned over the years goes way against the grain of what's recommended today, or even what I heard when I first started training. You're probably not gonna find it online. You're not gonna hear it from your favorite influencer. And most likely, if you follow the advice I give you, you'll probably be training drastically different from the average guy in your gym. I have for years, but it's only after going against the grain and going through this period of trial and error that I learned what I'm now sharing here. So if you're ready to speed up your progress and not waste time doing useless training and dieting methods to build muscle, let me share with you my top principles for mass gain training. Principle number one, progressive overload is key, but 99% of training programs apply it incorrectly. You're probably making this major mistake right now, but more on that shortly. Principle number two, quality of work is king and quantity of work is queen. Principle number three, frequency is vital, but not for the reason everyone else says. Principle number four, simplicity beats complexity every time. Principle number five, rest days are equally as important as training days. And the bonus principle number six, one of my favorites, no one cares if you're training harder than you need to. Now let's break all these down in detail, starting with number one, progressive overload is key. You hear it in every program, from every hardcore lifter, all the way to the science-based bodybuilders. Training needs to be progressive in order to grow muscle. This is a statement I stand by and agree 100%. However, let's first establish what this means. In simple terms, progressive overload is referring to doing more work than you have previously. This could be heavier weights lifted, more reps done, more sets, higher frequency, more time under tension, the variables are endless. However, most focus on adding weight to the bar. It is the most basic, most simple, and makes the most sense. Want a bigger chest? Benching 135 pounds now? Let's get it to 225. Okay, more muscle? Let's get it up to 315. This method works great, but the application by most programs guys in the gym use looks something like this. Week one, bench press 135 pounds for five reps. Week two, bench press 140 pounds for five reps. Week three, bench press 145 pounds for five reps. The program will call for progressing weekly by adding weight to the bar. The truth is this does work and it works very well for beginners. A basic linear progression program like this took me up to a two plate bench in my early teens, but it also kept me there for years until I broke this model. Because newbie gains are so rapid, it's easy to get caught up believing that the method you're using in the beginning is responsible for the results. The fact is, you could have done anything to grow, provided that you were training hard, eating, and resting. But once these new begins slow down, you quickly realize real progressive overload needs to be applied to your training. And just adding weight to the bar doesn't have the same effect that it did in your early years of training. To make real changes past the newbie stages, progressive overload has to come from progressive training, meaning your program should include more work done over time. This means starting with less sets, lower weights, and over the course of a training cycle, increase in overloading by adding more work, more sets, more reps, etc. The result of progressive overload in training then causes an adaption, ideally in the form of more muscle mass and stronger lifts. Think about it this way. Yes, you want to put more weight on the bar, but putting more weight on the bar is not what's going to get you the results. The increased weight on the bar is a reflection of proper programming. I always tell people this, don't force weight on the bar. When your body adapts from proper training, you'll become stronger and you'll need more weight for the same reps. Moving on to principle number two, quality of work is king. 
quantity of work is queen. With that said, many people will go off the deep end here and think more work is better, especially with all the people infatuated with what optimal training looks like. The fact is, most of you aren't full-time bodybuilders, so what's optimal in a lab setting is probably not realistic for you anyway. In reality, what's optimal for you is training with a plan that you can follow week in and week out consistently over time, applying progressive overload throughout the process. This means you might not be able to and probably shouldn't be doing hundreds of sets of every exercise under the sun. But if you do attack the key exercises, the ones that are best for you and your specific goals, and milk them completely week in and week out, you will get much better results than if you used every piece of equipment in the gym with poor form and little mind to muscle connection. If you use the exercises that you connect best with, feel no discomfort on, and train them progressively and are able to train with more volume, then go for it. But never add more volume unless you already laid the foundation of correct movements with proper form. You might think you need 30 sets per week on a lagging muscle group to grow, but what if you picked better movements and connected with them more? Do you think maybe it's possible you might get more out of 12 to 15 hard quality sets? The bottom line on this principle is quality work goes way further than quantity. Moving on to principle number three, high frequency training is vital, but not for the reason everyone thinks. One of the most common things you hear around the natural bodybuilding community is that naturals need to train muscles more frequently because muscle protein synthesis lasts only 48 hours and one body part per week is only ideal for enhanced bodybuilders. The truth is, training body parts twice per week is better for everyone, natural or enhanced, and it's not because of muscle protein synthesis. It ties right back into quality of work. Most bodybuilders train with somewhere in the range of 10 to 20 sets per week to grow muscle. Now 20 hard sets all for one single muscle group in one training session, that's a lot. You can do it if you enjoy it, but to be totally honest, I've never seen anyone's 20th or even 15th set for a body part that day done with any measurable level of intensity, performed nowhere near what they could have done if they had done it fresh. The weights are light, the mind-muscle connection is lost, and the pump is starting to dwindle. Yet think about this, if you still did that same 20 set workout, but split it up into 10 sets done on Monday and the other 10 sets done on Thursday or Friday, by default, the second half of this workout is already gonna become more productive. You'll train with heavier weights simply due to the fact that you're fresh, had time to rest, and not carrying the fatigue of the previous 10 hard sets of training. This increased weight on the bar already equals more volume, more overload, and that results in more muscle mass. Your lifting skills will increase because you're training similar movement patterns multiple times per week, as opposed to just one. This creates better technique, safer lifting, and this all results in more muscle mass, more strength, and less soreness than a typical once per week training program. Principle number four, simplicity beats complexity every time. If you're watching this video, then you probably watch other YouTube channels on bodybuilding and training. If so, you've probably fallen down the rabbit hole of optimal training design at some point, where guys are debating if a 30 degree incline is more productive than a 45 degree incline on a bench. The truth is, most of the guys that worry about this kind of stuff don't have enough muscle mass for this to even make a difference. This principle is very basic and doesn't need a lot of explanation, but it's a reminder to never forget the foundations of training. Have you gotten your bench up to three or 400 pounds yet? If not, you probably should keep it simple and focus on progressing on the basics. Then we could talk angles, time under tension, RPE, intensity, and intensity techniques. Principle number five, rest days are equally as important as training days. Admittedly, this one has probably taken me the longest to fully come to terms with. We all want results now, and if I tell you to go to the gym just four to five days, you're gonna feel like you're wasting time on those other two to three days. But if you're training hard, training progressive, and creating a stimulus to grow, you're going to accumulate a lot of fatigue, and fatigue carries with you from session to session. The only thing that drops fatigue is rest. One rest day is good, two is even better. Think about it like this. If you have a hard chest and back training session on Saturday, but your body is crushed from an entire week of training without rest, wouldn't you be able to train harder if you came in rested and recovered? Like the frequency training principle, this results in a higher quality of work done, more work, more weight, better performance, and ultimately more results and better growth. That's not to say you should take more rest days as building the entire physique does require multiple gym sessions per week, but building muscle also requires proper rest days. And finally, the bonus, principle number six, no one cares if you're training harder than you need to. Bodybuilding is about progress. A body that's beat down from intense training sessions can't perform the same way a body that's rested, has adapted, and come back better from a training session can. 
Many people call lifting weights that are too heavy for you ego lifting. While I agree, I think the real ego lifting comes from guys who don't know when to pull back in training. Guys who have to train for PRs every single session, lift until they crawl out of the gym, and relentlessly train to failure. There's a reason every top athlete in every sport around the world all have off seasons, time prioritized around recovery, as well as planned deloads, and then specific periods of time where they push the envelope and create serious demands on the body. Bodybuilding is no different. If you're struggling to build more mass, I encourage you to look at these six principles and see where you might need improvement. Many times I see guys not improving not because of lack of effort, but because of doing work that's simply just not productive. If you're able to check all these boxes and can apply them consistently over weeks, months, and years, you're on your way to some serious results. And if you need help getting this process going and want a program to get there, I definitely recommend you check out my five day mass gain program in the description. Or if you need customized one on one online coaching, you can contact me at all the links below. All right, guys, that's it for the video. If you want to see more of the best original body blink content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.